Hey everyone, and welcome back to your brand new Clash Rev video. Now today I want to discuss the best tips and strategies to get to Arena 10, which is the highest arena. It is also known as Legendary Arena. Now before uh, the Jungle Arena, the highest arena did used to be Arena 9. So I want to make a newer video on this topic, just to make sure that when people do search how to get to Legendary Arena, they are not mistaken that it is Arena 9, but instead Arena 10. Now my very first tip and the most important tip to get to Arena 10 is that you got to make sure that your card level is really high we're talking about having a card level like commons must be level 10 uh rares must be probably level 8 or level 9 and epics probably level 4 to level 5 that's as small as they can get now if you can get your cards to a higher level then that's perfect but in order to get your cards to these very high and extreme levels you need a lot of cards and a lot of gold and the quickest way to actually get a lot of cards and a lot of gold isn't by buying gold and buying uh giant chests it's actually by doing Grand Challenge tournaments. And I've even done the math. I've tried multiplying Classic Challenges by 10 because 10 Classic Challenges is the cost of one Grand Challenge. And I was pretty shocked. 10 Classic Challenges does give you less reward than one Grand Challenge. It seems pretty weird that you're putting in more time and effort in Classic Challenges in 10 of them and you're getting less resources in one Grand Challenge. But it's a bit more risky when you do one big Grand Challenge and because it's so expensive, only people who gem tend to use uh, Grand Challenges. And I know some of you out there are always below 100 gems, so make sure to spend your gems in Classic Challenges if you can't afford to do a Grand Challenge. And that's where you should be spending all of your money. Uh, yeah, just basically do Grand Challenges and uh, whenever you see a sale and you have extra iTunes money, make sure to pop it into those those uh, arena chests or those arena offers and also those holiday offers. My second biggest tip is what to upgrade. You don't want to upgrade more than 10 cards ever. Now, if you really wanted to, you could focus all of your cards into or all of your resources into eight cards. It still does work, but depending on the meta and the way the game is changing, if your deck becomes outdated and you only have eight cards that are maxed out, then you're going to be having a lot of trouble when you're trying to sweep in or replace another card in your deck with maybe a lower level one. And this is such a big tip because think about it. Would you like what do you think takes less gold upgrading five cards to level 10 or like 30 cards to level 10? It's going to take a lot more time to upgrade the 30 cards to level 10. And if I myself was forced to only upgrade eight cards, those cards would probably be the Executioner, although he might get nerfed, the Mega Minion, the Mini Pekka, the Rage, the Zap, the Elixir Collector, and most likely as a tank, probably the Giant just because he works in almost every single deck. And yeah, those are my uh, cards I would upgrade first. But that's just me. You guys can probably upgrade your own cards. It just depends on what type of player you like to be. And my last tip is that you should join a very active clan where lots of people donate all the time and the clan chest is always getting filled up. And I know this is common sense, but for some new players, facts like these can sometimes be blinded by bigger things like tournaments. And uh, yeah, by getting more gold, you can just get more XP, which means you can upgrade your tower and get a stronger defense. And I know everybody probably knows this fact, but when you donate cards, you're getting more gold than what the card would cost if you bought it in the shop. So essentially, if, if the card does show up once again in the shop, the one that you just donated, you're going to be profiting a little bit of gold, which I mean does add up over time. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to be showcasing two very strong decks. One of them is a free-to-play deck that everybody here can basically use. And the other deck is going to be a more exotic deck that has a lot of legendary and epic cards. Now this first deck has an average cost of 4.9. I uh, take that back, actually 3.9 average elixir, quite decent. Everything in my opinion below 4 average elixir is a strong deck just because it can do good both during W elixir and without W elixir. Now in this deck we do have a couple of epic cards but the rage card and the giant skeleton are both cards that you normally get at the beginning of the game so I'm assuming most players that are watching have those two epic cards. And yeah, mini P.E.K.K.A a great damage dealer for a cheap cost. I find that it's a great counter for the executioner card. Like look at the gameplay, takes out the executioner card. With the small zap, we take out his whole skeleton army for a positive one trade, and then he continues to just take out the, uh, the golem without our tower losing too much HP. And the giant skeleton, you could replace it with the giant card just in case you don't have this very common epic card. I mean, the giant is a great card also. It has more health than the giant skeleton, and it goes to the base directly, which for some players is a really good play. And the giant skeleton makes it to his crown tower. That's going to be GG. And it doesn't even need to explode for us to get the 3 crown. That is just a really good tanking card. 
and I know that everybody here knows a lot better free-to-play decks. So comment that down below. Help everybody out in the comment section because I'm pretty sure we can throw around a couple of good free-to-play decks just down below in the comments. Now here is the very exotic deck having a very expensive average cost of 4.2 Elixir. We have all the new toys including the Electro Wizard, Executioner card, Pekka and Sparky card. Now the deck might seem like a really weird one just because of all these different cards that you normally don't see inside of a deck. But if you think about it, it's a quite effective deck. We have our Anti-Air, that including the Electro Wizard and the Executioner card, which also play as good support cards because they do both amazing ground and air damage. Sparky is a good damage dealer. We have also our Pekka as an amazing damage dealer and the Rage card just to make sure that our pushes make contact with the tower just because all the cards in this deck are a bit slow. Now here is our first opponent, our first victim of this Pekka and Sparky deck. We're going to be facing maybe a Goblin Barrel Rotation deck. So the Electro Wizard is a pretty good counter card, but he puts down a rocket. I don't know if that was the best to play. That is a very big negative trade for the opponent. Now seeing that he did spend a lot of Elixir on that counter play, we can just go ahead and put down our very first P.E.K.K.A. push. Now what to support it with? The Sparky card or the Executioner? I'm probably going to go with the Executioner just because, yeah exactly, cards like the Minion Horde are very popular. And the Miner almost distracts our Executioner card, but just in time, he does manage to focus down all those minion cards. Now, we have a pretty good push, but the Executioner is in front of the P.E.K.K.A., which is not what you want. You want your tank to be taking all the damage. So let's back up our P.E.K.K.A. with a second Executioner card using our Mirror card. Now let's make sure to zap it, let our P.E.K.K.A. just get to the Inferno Tower, take it out in time before it takes out that card. And now we have a really good push. Skeleton Army almost got my P.E.K.K.A. off guard, but even the Executioner that is only focused at one angle still was effective enough to take out all those skeletons and just has enough HP to take out his top left tower. Now let's play a bit more defensive. This is a grand challenge so getting crowns doesn't really matter. All that matters is winning the game. So let's put down a greedy pump card and let's expect either a miner or a rocket just because we saw it from his rotation earlier on. Let's counter his miner with our Electro Wizard card. It does some great damage and our pump only takes one hit. And oh my god, he misses our pump. That is a free six Luxor. You can tell I'm pretty happy spamming my emojis. And yeah, our Electro Wizard also does some good two hits to his top right tower. Now another Goblin Barrel coming into our bottom left tower. Honestly, easy pickings for our Zap card. It doesn't quite one shot the Goblin Barrel like it used to do, the Zap, but it still allows our tower just to one shot those goblins, which uh, makes it uh, pretty efficient. Now because I know that the opponent does have the Inferno Tower, I'm going to put down my Sparky so that it does distract the Inferno Tower from our P.E.K.K.A card. And with the Zap, it also makes sure that the, part, the Sparky still does survive, which means that it can do some good damage even on low HP. Our P.E.K.K.A almost makes it to the tower, but it gets shut down by that whole Skeleton Army. And without the Executioner card, there's really no splash control in this deck. So make sure that when you do go for a P.E.K.K.A push, you for sure do have an Executioner behind that card, or else it's just going to get distracted and taken out for a negative trade. Now I kind of forfeit my bottom left tower just because I want to go for his right tower which means that we could possibly go for the crown tower in the future. There it goes, Pekka does make contact with that top right base and I really wanted to show off and get a 3 crown win with this deck but unfortunately we don't have enough time and we're going to be stuck with a 2-1 win which is still pretty good for a grand challenge game. So once again this deck is for people who have a lot of cards and a lot of legendary cards, people that just have a lot of gems to spend and the first deck was for free to play players that just like they want to get by and they want to make it to legendary arena with a pretty good solid deck. And to summarize the video, make sure to spend your gems only on grand challenges and classic challenges because spending your gems on chests, that is really inefficient and you get way more gold by doing tournaments. And if for some reason you don't have enough time to invest in classic and grand challenges, then make sure to spend those gems on those gold packages and those giant chests just because they're the most efficient things you can buy in the store for gems that will give you resources without spending too much time. You guys get the point though, just do your daily challenges, it's kind of like common sense, just be on the game, play actively, and you're going to get there very fast as long as you spend your gems efficiently, like I just said before. And if you guys did find this video extremely helpful, then a like would be highly appreciated, and I can't believe we're past 70k subscribers. I mean, if we keep it up at this rate, we're going to be getting 100k subscribers by the end of the summer, which means that we're going to be getting a silver plaque, or at least I will, but because of you guys, we're going to be getting it. Anyways, though, you guys have been awesome. Comment down below other video ideas, and I'll catch you guys later. Yo,